right, guys, that was great listening to the conversation there about coaching and self authors. Listen to your answers there, Franco and John. Uh, Franco, though, just as someone looking from the outside, it was really interesting when you were saying taking that it's almost a leap of faith into trusting somebody else oh, yeah. to advise you on your visit. Someone watching is going, Oh, I'm, you said you'd use the word scared, but some, I can imagine a lot of business owners are going, Scared, lack of trust. You know, how am I going to reveal stuff to you? How did you break past that barrier in the first place to go, I'm going to dip my toe in the water? Making the decision to actually find a business coach in the first place. It, there's no way you're going to get anywhere if you keep it all to yourself. Okay, so I had to expose the weaknesses in my business, um, which is what I was trying to work on. So that's where John came in. He had a look at it, uh, what I was doing and how I was doing it, and then we started doing tweaks. Now, it wasn't always necessarily what I wanted to do, you could know what I was thinking, but then, as I said, I'm not a business person. John's got a lot of experience in business, so his opinions and ideas were way more valid than mine were, so I had no choice but to listen, bear my soul, and listen to what mm. his advice was. It was interesting, you made a statement through there, you said that by having John in the room, it was looking at the business structure, not the work structure. Yeah. Is that what you're saying there? Yeah, yeah, because I mean, for me, I was always looking at, you know, how are we going to do this, how can we do this job, and how can we improve the job, and blah, but I was never actually looking at how can I get the business to be able to do that job in the first place, okay, so yeah, I was doing a little bit of marketing here and there, but it was all pretty hit and miss, and there was nothing consistent, mm -hmm. um, so uh, that's, that's where I had to learn how to market effectively, okay, and what I should be looking at, and how to play to my strengths, and avoid my weaknesses, um, but yeah, it's it really modifying the way I'm doing things so that I could get the business to a, to a point where I was happier with it. I think John, in that point, you just, just going to ask go on, you that, all right. John, go as on. a business coach, yes. is that where the strength is? You don't necessarily have to work, look at work structures, like how to clean carpet or how to re-dye carpet, but your strength comes in to go, okay, how do I take this and build a business structure around it? Is that where a business culture's strength really comes into play? I think so, because because I've worked across multiple industries, it's not about the widget, it's about the principles. And the word that came to me listening to Franco even then was helping businesses be disciplined in what they know and raising their confidence in what they know, because they know it. They're already doing it. They just need the help to bring clarity and confidence. But it really is about being disciplined. And you know, we've talked about the shotgun and the arrow, and Franco was shotgunning, but now he's an arrow in what he does, and he's very specific and very sharp than a few years ago, and, it, and that's powerful. And seeing the confidence, even in this conversation that Franco and I have had today, I am love listening to that because I'm thinking, wow, I can remember four years ago and see Franco now, and you often don't do that. Yeah. And that's why I thought today it'd be great to go back and talk about a long-term coaching relationship and see what Franco has done and the, the sharpness of the discipline that Franco now has in business. And that's what a coach brings to the room. He doesn't have to understand the widgets. I think you raise that point there, John, about being in the room for four years. And I'm sure the question pops in, and you actually raised it yourself, how do you stay relevant as a coach on okay. a four-year journey? Yeah. I'm constantly asking myself the question about Franco's business. What is going on in him? I review my notes, listen to the conversation again, think about what Franco has said to me, and I'm asking myself questions to ask myself to ask Franco that when I get in the room, but also I don't want to preempt that conversation. I want to go in the room, we have a cup of tea, and we start listening to the world in which Franco's operating in his business today. And I'm drawing from all the experience I get with all the clients that I'm working on. And they're challenging me and they're forcing me to grow. And so I, I get all these added values and new insights that I bring to every client in every new session. I'm bringing all of this fresh new history. Plus, I read and research I'm attentive, I'm reading books, I'm reading blogs, I'm listening to the business world because it's really important for me to help my clients. Franco, 
Listen to John and staying relevant. You mentioned a, a really interesting, and I know how John operates, he's really fast, really pushy, and. <laughs> <laughs> no, he's <laughs> not. <laughs> but in a positive way. Yes. But then I listen to business owners like yourself, and me included, I'll include myself. We have a limit of where we actually want to grow to. You mentioned that you don't want to have 20 or 30 vans on the road. You don't want 20 or 30 people working for you. So how as a business owner do you balance it to go, I can get John to still be relevant, still help me grow and mature, but I want to make it so it's comfortable for me? Well, as I've said, I don't want to go too far. John understands that. Okay? So he would get me, help me get to the level I want to be at and not say, well, you need to have 20 vehicles on the road. If I don't want 20 vehicles on the road, I'm never going to get it, no matter how much he pushes me, mm. okay? Because I will be resistant to it. Yes. But I know where I can get to, and I know that for, for what I, my idea is, it's going to give me a fantastic business. Yes. Uh, and that's, that's as much as I need. And yes. it's, uh, I don't need the extra um, headaches, I guess, if you want yeah, to put it that right. Because yeah. I mean, the bigger you get, the more problems there are associated yes. with it, unless you've got the, the absolute perfect people working for you all the way through. Um, I've got a very strong team behind me now, which is great. So I, I've still got the chance to go forward and put someone else on and still have an efficiently run business, which is really important. But then you sort of start to get to the point where you just think, is this worth the extra effort? Mm. Um, so that's where John has to understand where that's right. my space mm. is at, not just what he thinks I should be doing. Yeah. It's interesting listening to you, Franco, and obviously understanding your business is, is far beyond just carpet cleaning. Mm -hmm. And we, we see a lot of people jump up and down and say, niching, niching, and it always amazes me that I go to one of those sessions where someone's teaching niching and they're not niching themselves. <laughs> <laughs> and I look at your business, you haven't gone, I'm a carpet cleaner, that's my niche. You've gone, that's really my category. And you built all these services around Correct. specialists. That's right. High value services. Correct. Would, would it be right? And that's one of the strategies you guys have worked on. Absolutely, oh, yeah. absolutely. absolutely. Yeah. I mean, what's, what's the point of taking on a strategy that um, we're in business to make money, to have a profit? <laughs> it is not a dirty word. That's okay. Right. So yes, yes, I am more expensive than other people. Absolutely. But you know what? You're paying for a service that is going to deliver you value for your money at the oh, end of the day. So, yes. you know, that, that the, the, the whole idea of just delivering a service and being a specialist in that service and you don't do anything else, I think that is ludicrous because there is so much more other opportunities out there that as a business you want to take advantage of. You yes. know when you bring in other specialized services like your recoloring, you can change the color of complete carpet, you can do, you actually do efficient and proper stain room. And when you're looking at those specialist services, how do you as a single operator, like that's the business owner at the top, it's you driving it, mm -hmm. how do you manage to cope and bring those skill sets into your business in a manageable way? How is, you know, is it discussing these things with John? Is it industry knowledge? It's industry knowledge, okay, looking at the market and saying, look, there's, there's, there is an opening there, there is something that we can do, which mm. there might not be anybody else doing it or very few other people doing it, mm. okay? Um, for instance, when it comes to the, the, the colours, colouring side of it, Okay, that's something which is just recently. Uh, I actually brought in a guy from the US and he helped train, what was it, 16 other people here in WA. Okay, so yes, it is a niche market, but there's only a limited amount of people to do it. And I, I'll tell you what, I, I come across these sorts of problems every day, which means that every other carpet cleaner is coming across it. There's only 16 of us doing it. Wow. Okay, so when you look at it, yes, I brought it in and yes, I, I'm taking potentially some work away from itself, but when you look at it, there's the general picture overall, I'm helping the industry. And that's, that's right. one of the things I'm really passionate yes. about, okay, is helping yes. other people to pull themselves up. Uh, I'm almost, you know, I think I echo a lot of John's words to other people, <laughs> you know, so I'm becoming almost like a business coach to them as well. Mm. Because of the fact that I've, done, I've been there and done that, that's right. John's helped me give those experiences to, to develop my business and I can pass those on to other people as well. But you know, it's, it's really about driving your business to areas that are going to make profitable money for you. Yes. Okay, and there's no point in having something that's going to make a couple of measly bucks for you when it's all the extra effort involved in it. It's just not worth it. Okay, so you know, you, you might might do something, for instance, that uh, somebody else can do for for half the price. But can I do it that much better and deliver value for my customer? Yes. If I can't de 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 deliver value for my customer, I don't want to do it. 
And at the end of the day, that's what it's about, to give repeat business. We want people coming back. John, there was a couple of things in there when I was listening to Frank. The first one was obviously growth. Mm. And I know you're, you're very fast off, <coughs> but when you work with businesses, is one of your metrics that you're measuring, how fast can this business really grow without actually falling over itself? And how do you actually help a business owner decide or uh, gauge where they should grow to and how, they, how fast they should get there? Okay, speed is an interesting word there that you're using. And it really is tempered to the personality of the business owner. Um, and that's really interesting for a coach. So yes, I am fast paced, that's who I am. But if I push that onto Franco and he fails to deliver, we would not have gone for four years yeah. at all. We would have fallen out or whatever and you know, Franco would have just said, Nick off, John. Yeah. Um, I mean, that's one of the things that you did initially, is you looked at the, the way that I work and I'm a detailed person. Yes. I've got to look at everything, see so know everything yes. about what I'm going to be doing and then make a decision on it. So it takes me a while, whereas you would go, Yes. Yeah. And I'm a little bit slower there. We're getting yeah. better with it. Yes, that's right. But I am a little bit slower there. So he had to modify uh, absolutely. his approach to me. And I think that's really important. And relative speed of growth is if you can get 5 to 7% annualised on your business and grow at that kind of rate, that is really healthy. If you can get anything above that, it's exceptional. And I've had clients that have grown quite rapidly. And, and, it's, and it's sometimes it's not what I've done or what they've done, it's what we have done, mm -hmm. and that's the power of that conversation. And then it's almost like a principle all by itself will take place, it will grow. And that's really fascinating. And I don't know the speed of what might take place, but I always love that it does take place, and growth takes place on multiple facets all at the same time. And that's really, really neat. Guys, I know respect of your time, but I've got two more questions. One for you, John, yeah. and then one for both of you. John, we heard Franco then talk about, he's almost coming a business coach himself. Yeah, coach that's coach really cool. Do you find successful business owners, it's one of their traits, they do help other people up the ladder and don't see them as competitors? How, how do you find it? Oh, absolutely. And I want to impart confidence into business owners that they can actually train and impart to their staff because it's their staff that deliver the outcomes, hmm. not the business owner. What about other people that may be considered a competitor? Because Franco trains other people that don't actually work for him. Doesn't worry me. Because this, you know, it's a big wide world and I've only got a certain amount of time and I'm happy doing my space. And so if I can multiply myself in others, I am absolutely, give my stuff away and you know that's why we do YouTube we give it away it's there freely accessible to help and enhance people so they can do business better absolutely here's the last one for both of you the money question how do you decide as a business owner if if and when you should start paying yourself so four years ago you were at one spot when you're very free. you've been in business for 30 years mm -hmm. one of the challenges for startups so someone started maybe a carpet cleaning business and they say Franco, John, I don't earn enough yet to pay myself a wage. What is your opinion on that? <sighs> they say I'm spending all the money just paying the bills. Well, if you're just paying the bills, uh, you're not working in an effective business. <laughs> That's okay? right. Uh, look, at the end of the day, you're in a business to make a profit. Um, the unfortunate thing is with, with my world, uh, at least uh, in, in my industry, most guys that get into it, uh, they're buying themselves a job, not a business. Okay, they're mostly single operators. They've just um, got a, a couple of thousand extra dollars, or in the case of uh, just in the, in the last couple of years, which is why we've had the, the whole Gumtree thing and the Facebook thing, we've had a lot of people lose their jobs because the mining economy just went out the window. All of a sudden, they find themselves with no money and they just want to get cash real fast. So that's why um, I mean, I've seen it as bad as, as uh, one company was offering cleaning for the whole house including free carpet cleaning, they're that desperate, okay? $180, I mean, for me, just cleaning the carpets, that's three hours work. At $180, not even including the general cleaning, I've lost money. I know what my business costs are. 
I've analysed, so John's helped That's me right. analyse my business costs. So that I knew exactly where I needed to be <coughs> how to make a profit, and that's the, you know, the biggest yeah, thing. So you be able to drive, make a profit. I mean, one of the things I've, I've heard about, uh, I've heard years ago, yeah, their job stands were just over break, and that applies to a, a lot of people. Yes. Okay? Um, because they don't understand the dynamics of the business world, and until they yes. understand that, they won't make any money, and they won't be able to pay themselves wages because there's just not enough coming in. You know, it's all well and good that you go to a job, I and mean, you know, this job here, you've come out with 100 bucks, but if your costs on that job was 60, um, yeah, well, that didn't really work out very profitable, did it? Okay, you got $40, you've been there for three hours, you got $40. Shouldn't you just be working for someone else? There's no point in being in business for yourself, because you're actually, you're going backwards, not forwards. So if you don't build it in from the beginning, mm -hmm. you don't have a business. So you do need to build, and that's where you build a proper budget. Yeah. And when you do that, the power of what you aim at changes entirely. That I want to grow this so everybody actually is lifted. Not only my clients, but everybody that I engage with. And when I've done that in businesses, they've all grown, and the people have grown. So you don't have a business if you don't pay yourself. Fantastic. <laughs> I have respect for your time. Thanks for yeah. your understanding. It's fantastic talking to Frank O'Priel for Fresh Air Carpet Cleaning and uh, John Hardy from P Consultancy. And John, it's on YouTube, so we want people to... Abso absolutely. So remember, folks, uh, subscribe because we want you to get this content to help you. Ding the bell because that way the content comes to you automatically and we're doing this on a regular basis. We're pushing out a lot of really good content because we want to help you do business better.